what's going on, YouTube and all my hardcore subscribers? What's up? You know me, I'm top back in the kitchen. All right. A lot of things to talk about, but you know what time it is. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Now, before I open this beer, I just want to check something real quick. I'm doing a little bit of different uh, uh, close-up with the camera. Uh, just let me check my uh, thing. and Hopefully, I'm not cutting my head off or anything like that. So, bear with me. I think I'm all right. Yeah, I believe so. I think we're going to be good here. Because I'm going to be in kind of close talking to you guys. Okay, today's December 3rd. I was born on this day in the year of our Lord, 1957. Now, why is that important? Well, to you guys, it's not that important because everybody has a birthday. It's no big deal. But today is my 63rd birthday. Oh, yeah. Still got it, baby. Still got it. Now, another thing happened that was a little bit more tragic. Because before I open this beer, let me show you this. That's right. It's my tooth. I went round and round with a dentist for the last couple weeks over this stupid tooth right here. It's an incisor. And it's one of my originals. So this tooth is an original tooth that's 63 years old. Should go in the archives or something. But anyway, fossils. But here, here's the deal. None of the above activities for the next five days. No smoking, no straws, no spitting, no alcohol. Well, what do you think, guys? I just had a pull two hours ago. I got a little swab up in there. So no alcohol and get up in there. Mmm. Oh yeah. That's good. Now, so much for that. First tooth, the first tooth I've ever had pulled in my mouth ever in 63 years. Kind of a bummer. Now I've lost a tooth, but I pulled it out myself. It broke years ago and I pulled it out. It was no big deal. All right, those are all the rules and regulations I've got to follow for the next five days. And another thing, dry socket, something about dry socket. All right. Here's a couple of things that people on my channel have asked, are new to my channel, and ask these questions because you know I have over a thousand videos out there. Salute. And I've deleted a bunch, but I've got over a thousand now. I would have had probably 13, 1400 videos out there if I'd have never deleted about 300 of them. But anyway, here's the number one question that I get on several of my videos that are going viral is uh, land and property, off-grid living, off-grid land, and that kind of thing. And I did a picture, a video of that old house next to me <clears throat> and what the story is and, you know, the backstory on it and all that. And, of course, I'm getting a lot of scammers from all over the world. Hey, I got cash. Just let me know when I can come buy it. I'm not selling the damn land. It's under an agent contract. And I told, uh, you know, it's a, it's a real estate agent selling land. Not me. It just happens to be next to me. But anyway, the story now is it's still for sale. I met the new agent. The old agent got fired by the family because no one wants to buy the damn place for $80,000. And I don't blame them. It's too damn much. That old house on it sucks. And they got it valued at $31,500, which that automatically is a bunch of crap because you're going to have to pay taxes on a structure that you can't use. It's condemned. Whatever. But here, here, here's the deal. Here's the question I keep getting asked all the time from people around the United States and different parts of the world. Can I, how can I find remote land cheap? The easiest question, the easiest way for me to explain it, guys, guys, the easiest way for me to explain it, again, is this. You have to look. 
You have to search listings. You have to go in your car and drive out into the country and, 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 and get a, a feel for everything. So Craigslist, I mean, you know, whatever, all the different resources that are out there. But the bottom line is, is that when you find land, then you got to negotiate. You got to understand what you're negotiating and why you're negotiating. And you also got to edu educate yourself on the ratings of the land. A lot of you guys are really surprised, don't know really what all that means. You got to know what the rating on these the, the parcels of lands that you're trying to look for and what the intended purpose of that land is going to become. If you don't do your due diligence to do the research on it, you can get yourself stuck in a big world of shit when it comes to land, owning it. Especially if you're trying to go off grid and you're trying to build structures that you know damn well will never pass any inspection. So you've got to be able to comply with the zoning. And the bottom line is, is that you've got to educate yourself. I have no education. I sit down every single night and I do research every single night, not just on one topic, on 30 different topics. I'll do the research just to get an understanding of what's going on. Perfect case and example is this tooth I had pulled. <clears throat> Excuse me. I still I've got Novocaine still on my face and, and and a little blood and stuff. So bear with me. No pain, no pain. Everything's good. It's just I got this damn it's impact. I got it packed in there right now, so I'm kind of talking with a big wad of cotton in my mouth. But the education part is this: is that I shopped around for dentists. I got on YouTube and did all the research on what it takes to pull a tooth, repair a tooth, do a root canal, you know, root root rot, you know, the pulp, all the all the things to build up the crown, the types of materials, and the price ranges for all these different services. In my case, I would it would have cost me to save the tooth. To save it now, $4,000. I got that bid constantly across the board. To pull this tooth with the initial consultation fee, $475. Now, a lot of people said, oh, you should have spent the four grand, you got the money. Yeah, but I'm 63 years old. I'm not a, I'm not, you know, I, I can smile, I got teeth, you know, I've got all my teeth except two. Okay, all of them. I still got all my wisdom teeth, you know. So the bottom line is, is that I looked at it as I could put a bridge in anytime I want to. So I was playing a numbers game, but they were trying to upsell me. They were trying to give me all this gloom and doom. Oh, this, that's going to happen. You know, the rod. Oh, you can't. You don't want to smile. You know, what do you think the people say? You know, you got this hole up there. Oh, and I said, all that means nothing. That means nothing to me. I'm looking at two things. How much does it cost me to keep it? How much is it going to cost me to get rid of it and not have to worry about it anymore? That's all I'm worried about. And that's what I did my research on. So, 475 versus 4,000. End of story. Okay, that's that on my birthday. First tooth pull ever. So, it's kind of a weird deal there, you know? Maybe this is the sign that I'm going downhill. <laughs> Fuck that. You know, I'm going to... I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep strong as long as I can, and that's the bottom line. And I want you guys to do the same thing. Now, back to the land thing, because that's the number one question everybody always asked about is this, friends. You got to do your homework. You got to go out there and look at the land. You got to call people in the area, talk to farmers, talk to the locals, you know, get involved. You know, find out what the town's like. Find out what the cops are like. Find out what the ordinances are like. You know, you got to know all this information. If you don't know this information, you can go out there and get yourself screwed over. You know, when I can tell a real estate agent her job better than she knows her own job, and all I do is do the due diligence and look up the proper information on the situation, you know, you know I'm sitting out there talking to her, and the bottom line is I knew more about the damn land than she did. And they fired the other guy. Damn. Anyway, 
I want all of you to understand that, oh, here's here, here, here how I'm going to tie this all in. Because this is what's going on now during COVID-19. Raleigh, this is just within the last few days, we, the city of Raleigh, and this is, you can go check, you can check all the resources, you, you can do any fact checking, fact finding you want to, but this is the God's honest truth. We are the number one city in the United States that's number one in residential construction, commercial construction, and highway and byway and road expansion. Number one in the entire United States in those three categories. So what does that mean to you? What it means to me is, is the county right beside Orange County, right on the backside of where my farm is, they just had a contract go down that uh, Chick-fil-A is going to build a huge distribution center in Alamance County, right next door. $125,000 is going to be the average pay. The average pay. And they're going to hire like 336 new employees. Alamance County, holy crap, they got the lowest taxes in North Carolina besides maybe Graham and a few others. But the whole point is, is that don't let this COVID thing freak you guys out. Because remember, I always say if you're smart, you follow the money. All you have to do is follow the money. The money will take you where the business is. And I'm telling you, the money is all coming here to North Carolina. And the money is coming into Raleigh. There's so much capital investment going into Wake County right now that we're going to probably be the number one hub. And even Hollywood's coming back to Wilmington, okay, the movie studios. So... Economically speaking, here's the deal. If you really want to run a business and you want to get into something that you know damn well you can make some money at and you can also succeed, you need to really think about getting into the service industry. The service industry. That is where it's at, baby. Oh, yeah. Because you got to clean up everybody else's mess. That's what it really boils down to. Cleaning up the mess. Repairing the things that are broken. On and on and on. Monthly, weekly, yearly, biannual, who knows? You can sign contracts all over the place just on these businesses that are flourishing during COVID. And don't let this economic crisis looming, gloom and doom scare you either. Because the other part of this is too, the stock market's already up. Confidence is up. You know, it doesn't matter. Like I've always said, it doesn't matter who's in the presidency. It all boils down to policy. Policy against business. If you are stupid, a stupid politician, you think big business, you know, oh, we're going to, you know, stick it to big business. You're going to stick it to yourself because they can always move. All right. So there's that. Now. One of the other questions that I think I get a lot, and it's really a split between a few, because, you know, I still own Mr. Fitzall. It's, operation, it's operating at 110% nonstop wide open. I booked myself all, already in the March of next year. All I have to do is pick up the phone, call somebody, and say, hey, I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go? So, I've always answered all your questions honestly. I've always come forward with the right information for you. I've always told you how it is and you know like it is. So now I'm not changing my tune because it is the deal. Even during COVID, this will pass. This is just some big blown out of proportion scenario that the world wasn't ready for. As many times as we've gone through these type of events in the past, we still can't get our act together. We don't know how to respond 
catastrophe because we're all we're always in a reactionary mode. We're not in a an aggressive take you know planning plan in the future, plan five years down the road, plan ten years down the road, plan fifty years down the road. Government doesn't know how to plan. They only know how to react and think that throwing money at it is going to just solve the fucking problem. It won't, okay? It's going to take people like you and me. The people I love are you guys. You're the ones that make the channel possible. You're the hardcore subscribers. You're the ones that I rely on when I have questions about anything. So on that note, happy birthday, Tom. And I'm already breaking rules. Oh, I went out and bought me a present. Hold on. Oh, yeah, that's right. I bought me two brand new hats. Oh, yeah, very stylish. I love, I love the uh, color on this army hat, man. That's badass. Very good quality. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Oh, yeah. Let's do a proper one. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all have a blessed day. You know me, I'm Tom. Subscribe, comment, share, or like. Smash that bell for future notifications. That way, all 20,300 and plus of my hardcore subscribers, you can get future notifications instantly about the next video coming up. On that note... A little older, a little wiser, and not deeper in debt. All right. Let's rock on, folks.